What's going on guys? My name is Suboptimal and I'm just your typical Indian software engineer. In this video, we'll go over the basics of signed distance fields or STFs for short. An STF is essentially a function that you can define for a shape. It takes in a point and any other parameters that the shape may need and gives you a number. Now that number is the signed distance from the edges of that shape. Any point inside of the shape will yield a negative number. Any point outside of the shape will yield a positive number and any point directly at the edge of the shape will yield a zero. There's a whole list of reasons why STFs are super useful in computer graphics. And if you really wanna dive into those details then head over to Inigo's website and check out his collection of tutorials on the topic. But for the purpose of this video, we'll mainly focus on understanding the basics of the circle STF. Before we get started, I'm just gonna ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Cool, with that out of the way, let's jump right in. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is to just set up our fragment shader. All we have to do is create our void main function and set up a color. So don't look at all of this commented out code. We're gonna go through this step by step, but the real main thing that I want you guys to focus on is right over here where we have the void main function and we have a couple colors. I'm setting the color equal to red and you'll notice here that all the way at the bottom of the file, I have geo frag color equals vec4 color with 1.0. So that is basically what is setting this red color up right here. For example, if I were to go up here and change this to black, then you'll see that the GLSL canvas gets updated to black. And all we're really going to be doing in this SDF tutorial is updating the color one step at a time until we have a nice visualization. First thing we're going to want to do is set up our UV coordinates. This fragment shader has coordinates that are the width of the screen and the height of the screen. We want to convert that to be between 0 and 1 just so it's easier for us to work with. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to first set up this UV value here. It's a VEC2. And in order to visualize this, what we're going to do is update the color just so you guys have an idea of what's happening. If I save that, you'll see this color pop up. And just to sort of explain what's happening this is the bottom left which is zero zero and that's why it's sort of black here and as you go all the way to the right the x coordinate is increasing right over here from zero to one which is why you're seeing red over here as you go all the way up to the right you'll see that the x and y coordinates are increasing which is why you see yellow and at the top left you see only y is increased which is the green value so one more thing that i'm going to do here is i'm going to subtract 0.5 from the UV coordinates, which is going to essentially shift this up to the top right, such that the 0, 0 coordinate is at the center of the screen. So I'm just going to make a few other minor adjustments just to clean up the code. And this is going to be the basic template, and we're going to be drawing our SDFs from here it's time to start working on the circle SDF. This is what I was explaining at the beginning of the video. Uh, what we essentially want to do is find the distance to the center of the circle. And now I'm going to pass in two key coordinates. One is the center, which is going to be at 0, 0, which is again right over here at the screen. And the radius, I'm going to set it to about 2.5. Actually, let me just set it to 1 just to show you guys what's happening. I'm going to set the radius to 1, the center to 0, 0. And I'm going to pass it into this STF circle uh, function. So this function is essentially getting the length of the point and subtracting the radius. This is There's a, a ton of these different functions that you can find here at um, Inigo Kiles's website. But basically, this is this, the function for the sine distance field of a circle. So coming back here, um, what we're going to do is set the color to be orange if it is greater than zero and blue if it is less than zero. So if I save that, you'll see here that we get our simple little circle. And you can actually play around with the circle as well if you wanted to. Um, so here, let me just showcase what happens if I make the center of the circle varying based on you time. I'll save that and you'll see that the circle is sort of moving um, in the screen. So I'm going to make the circle a little bit bigger. And now let's think about how we can add a black outline to this circle. Now I'm going to first start off with this line right over here. And what this line is saying is we're going to take the exp 
function is it takes the Euler number, which is like 2.71 or so. It does an exponential to the distance of the circle. So we know that everything inside of the circle is less than zero and right around the edge it's about zero and then right outside it's gonna be greater than zero. So let's see what this function does. If I save it, you can sort of understand what's happening here. In the center exponential of like negative values it trends to zero, it's gonna be a little dark. As you get closer to the edge, of the circle e to the zero is going to be one which is this is why you can see like the blue color here and as soon as you sort of go beyond that um, it just becomes white what we want to do is figure out a way to darken the edge of the circle and that's what this line is going to help us do now this is definitely the hardest line to sort of dissect in this video so you might want to pause and try to sort out the math here but essentially this line is going to give us this sort of black outline on the circle. Now let's start thinking about adding some waves to showcase more of this SDF. And what I'm going to do here is multiply the color by 0.8 and then add that with the color multiplied by 0.2. What do you think this does? This actually does nothing. Yeah, I saved the file, but nothing happened here. What we really want to do is multiply the color based on the sine value of the distance to the circle. This is again the SDF, right? It got a little bit darker and maybe this isn't exactly clear what's happening. So let me comment this line out and sort of increase the frequency of this wave. And yeah, we basically added these waves. And if, if you really wanted to have some fun, you can uh, make the waves move as well uh, if you add a time variable inside of the sine function. So I'm gonna save that and you can see here that these waves are sort of moving. And so the last thing we might wanna do is set up a white border on the circle. And to do this, what we're gonna to wanna to use is the mix function. And what the mix function says is set it to be white when this value is equal to zero and set it to be the value of what the color already is when this value is one. And how are we determining this value? We're using the step function. What the step function does is any time the val this value right here is less than 0 0.1, the step function is gonna round it down to zero. Otherwise, it's gonna round it up to one. What we will see is that uh, basically the entire circle is covered in this white circle. We know that the distance to the circle is negative below that point, right? So anything inside the circle is negative. Obviously, that's gonna be set to zero. And if it's set to zero, we're gonna set the color to be white. Otherwise, we're gonna set it to the color, which is why everything inside the circle is white and everything outside of the circle is what it was before. Let's add an absolute value function here. And that's something that you might realize is something you do commonly. Uh, and that basically fixes that issue for us. And now one final thing that we could do is use a smooth step. So this is a step function. As you can see, it's a little bit like rigid. So instead of a step function, you can use a smooth step. And basically what that does is it smooths out this curve. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a somewhat of a decent understanding of SDFs and how you can work with an SDF. When I was trying to learn this stuff, there was no videos like this, so I just decided to make it. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.